so I was streaming some game dev live of my uh, SCP uh, When Day Breaks survival horror game, and one of the things that I was using is a post-process material to create heat haze. So rather than rather than explain it live, I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd make a video about it because it's it's rather simple, and and a lot of people could get, you know, could could be helped by it, and it's dead easy to do. All you need is one normal map and orange pill, uh, sort of styled normal map. I don't know if it's coming through in the recording, but it's kind of kind of ripply, kind of like if you if I don't know if you blew up a noise map, blurred it, and then and then cranked it through X normal to produce to produce the the normal map we get the sort of result that I've got here. But you can use any normal map that you want. We're really only going to be using the red channel, which might come through in the recording a little clearer. So it's just like a, it looks kind of kind of like concrete, I guess. <laughs> so that's the, that's the material. And the other thing we're going to need is a post-process material. So we'll make that now, so we'll call it PP heat haze. And we'll open him up. Drop him up here, and we'll put our put our texture in our our normal map. And obviously, we're going to need to change the material to post process. Now, the the key to this, the way it's uh, the way it works, is by manipulating these uh, the, the UVs of this texture and overlaying it over the scene. And for that, we'll need a scene texture. The scene texture node and we'll switch it to post process input zero cool then so this is going to have to move right in in that it's going to like uh like heat haze sort of ripples over the screen so we need to grab texture coordinates and we'll add a multiply node set the b value to 0 0.1 these are just my values. You might have to dial these in for your own, for your own texture. We'll run it through a panner to get our texture to move and plug that into UVs. Now, because we'll, we'll do some instancing so that we can sort of dial it in in real time. Uh, so we'll just right click, create material instance. And then in the, the world outliner, I'm using the third person template, which comes with a post-process volume. We don't have to think about it too much. Uh, we'll just search for. They're not called blendables. Uh, they're in rendering. I thought somewhere. Yeah, post press materials array. Add one. An asset reference, and then we'll drag our instance onto it. Done. Simple. And. For the sake of instancing, we're going to use a bunch of scalar parameters. Call this one uh, panner speed. Plug it into speed. And we'll just give it the default value of, let's say, 1. And we need to take the just the red channel from the, the normal map. Otherwise, this will take in a, a vector 3 and using the whole texture as a, a vector 4. So they won't be compatible. But you can mask it out if you want to use the, the whole texture. It's just simpler to use the the red channel. We'll send this into a multiply and we need another scalar parameter, this one called texture multiplier. Plug it in here. This will need to be fairly low, I guess, depending on the resolution or the, the texel density of your of your normal map. Texel density? Texel density. So set this down, let's say or to 0 0.5 at first, we'll dial it in. And that should handle our texture. We'll need another texture coordinate though to add with the, the scene texture. And we'll just combine we'll combine our texture coordinates with our with our texture here with an add. And then put it into the UVs and send out the color to the emissive. Then we hit save and we'll have a look. <laughs> So that's something that's that's getting there. We're getting there. Now we can open up our instance, and we can dial this in. So the higher the texture multiplier goes, the more crazy erratic the effect is going to be. But if we turn this down to quite low, say 
start with 0 0.2, and our PNF speed should also be quite low. And it is also going in a sort of sideways direction. We can fix that. Now, if we rename this to PNF speed x, and this one to PNF speed y, and put them through an append, or going into speed. I'm going to save that again. All right, so then we'll set the Y up and we'll turn X to zero. 2.01. And there it is, there you have it. Dead easy effect, really quite simple. And now we have, we have heat haze. This has a, you, you can be creative with this, use a, do it to make a, a few different effects. But it's, it's dead simple to set up <laughs> and quite an effective effect, an effective effect. So I hope this helps everybody. This is how I did it in Daybreak. Uh, be sure to check that out and drop by, drop by my channel on Twitch. Until next time.